Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Cable TV. We here at Cable are proud to be hosting the 25th anniversary party of one of Britain's most iconic club nights, Danny Rampling's legendary shoe. My first memory of Shum is that I can't really remember very much about it. It's a bit difficult, I know I was normally off my fucking head. Darling, I can't remember anything about it. It's the club that everyone can remember going to, but no one can remember anything <laughs> yeah. of. I'm pleased and incredibly privileged to be joined now on the cable sofa by one of the true founding fathers of British rave culture, Danny Rampling. Mr. Danny Rampling, amazing having you here with us in the uh, in the studio on the sofa. Have you had a good weekend so far? Uh, it's wonderful to be here. Had a brilliant weekend here so far, and it's not over yet. Can you kind of take us through, you know, um, how you kind of discovered the Balearic sound? I went on holiday to Ibiza in 1987 with um, Paul Oakenfold and Nicky Holloway and Johnny Walker. And, um, well, that's where I first discovered House. We went to Amnesia, which at the time was an open-air club, and it was a real melting pot of people, open air, under the stars. And the DJ there, DJ Alfredo, was playing all kinds of, uh, you know, styles of music, you know, from reggae to funk uh, to Latin and house and, uh, and techno. Before that, I'd only been playing hip-hop, soul, funk, and I had a show on Kiss FM, which was a pirate station at the time. I went to Ibiza, and everything changed. At the end of the, uh, of the night in the morning, about 8 o'clock in the morning, Alfredo played a U2. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. At the end of the night, the sun's coming up, and um, it was just quite ironic. This is like, you know, like six years I've been like, you know, looking for something that's going to give me this break as a DJ, and that was it. It was like, you two still haven't found what they're looking for, but I certainly have here with the sun coming out, this magical mix of people and music, and that was it. The stage was set. And as soon as I came back to London, I created Shoom. The Shoom was originally in the fitness centre, a basement, yeah. here in Southwark, and that's why I chose Cable yeah. to promote this weekend here. What are you kind of into right now? Is the, is the lineup tonight uh, kind of a good reflection of the of a lot of what you're listening to at the moment? Or? Well, most definitely so, because yeah. Shoom in its present form is about the past and the present, and its musical lineup. I've combined the DJs that were originators in the beginning and new wave of DJs, people like Christian Jellis, uh, Matt Playford, Elana Inc, James Priestley. Can you talk to us about the smiley face? Oh. How it kind of became a symbol of rave culture and what it's kind of that is a symbol of? I had a stylist friend, I saw him in a club one night and he had all these smiley badges all over him, uh, you know, his jacket and stuff and a t-shirt and I thought that would be a great logo to adopt. The scene was about optimism, you know, hope, unity, love, peace, the whole scene deconstructed everything. It brought you know, so many different groups of people together socially. So I was going to say, what's what's next? What's what next? What can we look forward to Some in sleep. 2030? <laughs> no, all joking aside, what's next? Um, I'm producing an album with my fiance DJ partner, Ilana Rink, and we're putting together an album. We're going to start work on that in 2013, I'm writing a book and more touring and um, enjoying myself as a DJ. That's what's next. And particularly what's happened here this weekend. Yeah. Yes, the spirit of the whole event and the feeling, and it's very intense in here on Saturday night. So um, it's a very uncanny thing and hard to describe, but I have that feeling of uh, apprehension, excitement, and knowing something is breaking through yeah. and becoming big again. And, uh, and it's, it, it, it's a wonderful feeling and there to be embraced. Brilliant, thank you so much. Thank you. Here we are at uh, 25 years of Shum. Back in the 90s, it was all about the sounds, it was all about the music, it was all about going out with your group of friends and being on the dance floor. Great music, happy people, lots of loving people on the dance floor. Too far gone. 
What is your first memory of a shroom night? Seeing Seal dancing and then seeing Boy George. I was 17 and it was the first place that I went to. I actually went to Busby. Who are you looking forward to seeing the most? Uh, I feel a bit of rampling to be honest with you. Trevor Fung, Danny Ramplin. Derek May, probably Derek May. Cables are brilliant, it's such an underrated club, like the brickwork, the arches, it's like, should be iconic. I've heard so much about it, gonna see what all the fuss is about. I look around here and there's so many people I've seen from 20 odd years ago, and everyone's still kept that, that feeling inside. Up next, we have incredibly talented house producer and resident at Space in Ibiza, Black Places. So Matt Blake, kids. Hello. Hello, welcome. So how did you get involved in this whole Shoom business? Before the, the, the Shoom story was I was a little bit too young to be going um, back in the day as they say. Um, but my older brother uh, had a membership card and he used to come in and, and give me the tapes. And I, I was a serious nerd as a youngster and he used to just, I used to play over the top of them on really rubbish keyboards. Can you tell us how you first met Danny Rumpling? Uh, yeah, it was funnily enough. I was actually playing air keyboard, uh, and he came. Yeah, and he came up to me and he said, "What's with the air keyboard?" And, and I said, "Well, my guitar's in the Menders." So I didn't recognise him. Yeah. Because he's like the the radio face, and and before online, yeah. as he's talking, I'm thinking, I know his voice. Why? Why do I reckon? And a lot of people came up and it was, it was getting a lot of attention. And then it sort of just dawned on me yeah. how I was sitting talking to him. And I got all, all of a sudden become a little bit shy. He always stayed in contact and, and incredibly supportive. And when I sort of come of age in the studio, he was the first port of call that I'd send my music to. Yeah. And straight away, it was straight away playing the music on Radio 1. 16 years on yeah. and be years. It's a real honour to be still working with him. How do you think kind of... Um Club culture has kind of changed over the time that you've been, you've been oh. kind of DJing, especially in London, because you're obviously talking about space and stuff yeah. like this. You know, I mean, how do you think that the scene now compares? I mean, I know a lot of uh, DJs from different uh, generations that have started playing very different music yeah. in their sets, and that is changing. If that trend continues, yeah. two years from now, we're being the same, everyone under one roof. So, what can we look forward to in 2013? Uh, well, I've made an album, yeah. um, which is completely different sound to uh, what I've normally done. And what, what's the sound of the album? The sound is, um, huh, I don't even, I wouldn't even want to put it into, into, I don't think you can, just enjoy it if you get to listen to it. I yeah. mean, we're drenched with music these days. Um, so for uh, one day it, you'd be um, happy that someone brought you music. Yeah. Today you should be just be happy if people have listened to it. Amazing, thank you. Thank you. Back in the day, can you give me a little bit of insight on what the rave culture was like? What this whole Balearic scene did with Alfredo and Avita and you know what Danny and the guys brought back was the freedom of expression. It, it wasn't just one sound of music, it was anything. Music evolves as it does all the time and I've run a record label now for 19 years. Which label's that? It's called Wall of Sound. Absolute My pleasure. Mark Jones, by the way. Can I have a hug, Mark Jones? <laughs> And now it's time for the man, the legend, Security Chris. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello and welcome to Cable Club London. I'm Security Chris and I'm here to tell you what's coming up over the next few weeks. On the 29th of December, we have Planet V with D with DMB veteran. Cut, 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 cut. On the 29th of December, we have Planet V with DMB veteran LTJ Bookham and also playing Bailey and Blade Runner. Wicked. New Year's Eve, we've got Connected with house legend MK taking the decks along with Waif and Strays. No artificial colours and, and Amin Edge. Amin. But pronounced Amin. Don't leave all this in. I'll kill you if you do. And on the first weekend of January, we have a free idiosymphonic party. Nailed it. With Wilkinson and Brake going back to back with DJ Dyer. Remember, stay out of trouble, you crazy kids.
Up next, I am so excited to be joined by Detroit techno legend, Derek May. Derek May, welcome to Cable. Thank you for Glad having to me. Happy to, be, happy to be here. How's your weekend been so far? Good. Uh, here I am again. Second <laughs> night at Cable, Danny Rappling's party. Can we talk a little bit about, um, about Detroit, about you and the, the Belleville Free and the beginnings of, of techno? It almost seems, you know, remarkable in, in a sense where three guys, three young kids from, from Detroit proper, but moved to this little small suburb, went to school together from the grade of seventh grade, they had like-minded interests like most kids do at that age. They want to do something different or listen to music different or just sort of be off the cuff with something. And one way or another, it, it turned into a, a, an opportunity for us to be creative and make music and make our own genre of music called techno music. That almost sounds unrealistic. It almost sounds like something you make up. But it really happened, and we really did it. I mean, like this, I could, I could give you a lot of different variations to how we ended up getting to this point. But basically, it was Juan Atkins. Here's what happened. Juan and I weren't even friends. I'd come into, into his house, and Aaron is the brother of Juan. And we were very good friends as kids, 13 years old. And Juan was sitting over in the corner playing chess on one of those uh, three-level chess, chess boards, like something like you see uh, Spock in Star Trek <laughs> yeah. playing. And he played by himself. He's 13 years old as well. And he had his bass guitar, and he was write, writing his notes. And I used to see him when I would come visit my friend Aaron. But he wouldn't talk to me. As a matter of fact, Juan didn't even like me, okay? And how we became friends is that one day I said to him, I play chess too. And that's how we became friends. He had these, this vast variety of tastes at the age of 13, 14 years old and all this music that I had never even heard before in my life. It was Jimi Hendrix, it was Funkadelic, it was YMO, it was Kraftwerk. This stuff was dynamic to hear it at that point. When you, people now hear it every day. But you just can't imagine what it was to hear this music. There was no internet, there was no radio playing it, there was no one playing this stuff. There was, you only had to know about it because somebody else knew about it. Yeah. What's the kind of scene like in Detroit right now? We've never had a, a real vibrant club scene. We've never had that. We've never had uh, a metropolis where people are just out and about and finding things. And we've always had like uh, these sort of underground sort of movements. And then it's gone, and then it's like six months or a year or two years later, maybe five years later, then there's another explosion. We really had a, a, a real downfall in the last, I'm going to say once again, last five years. Uh, ever since the sort of exodus, a lot of people across the, across the world, creative people have all moved to Berlin. It happens, I get it. But um, it's, it's been really probably very extremely profound more or less in Detroit, because we've lost our creative class. It's slowly moving pos in a positive way again, but it's just not that, we don't have that explosion of creativity all over the city like most places. Um, so what are you um, working on at the moment? What can we expect? What can we look forward to in 2013? Well, the Transmar compilation just came out on the 5th of December. It's doing extremely well. On it is uh, 25 artists mostly brand new artists uh, working with Transmat. Uh, the We Love compilation is coming out fairly soon. I'm doing that, that's a collaboration with myself and Jimmy Edgar. And of course, I'm touring around the world constantly. Busy, 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 <laughs> trying to save the world from bad music. Thank you so much. Thank you. What's your fondest shoe memory? Um, I know I've got shoe fetish complete all the time. I've got millions of shoes. Boots, shoes. Not shoes, shoe Oh, shoe. 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 Stay out of trouble, you crazy kids. <laughs>